But I want to start with a little video that all department chairs had to make about our departments um, sometime, I think, last fall, somewhere in that time frame. And I like this video because it sort of gives you a concise synthesis of the essence of the program. And then I will take you through some of the more nuts and bolts of the program, including introducing the people that you will work with, although they're not here, I'll just tell you about them. And then there'll be some time for question and answer. So, and Rue will facilitate this. Hi, I'm Amy Roop, and I'm the department chair of art education. And I'm sitting in my studio today. Um, and I wanna to talk to you a little bit about art education at CCS. At CCS, we really embrace this idea of teaching as an art. It blends the best of studio practice and design thinking in order to create innovative curriculums for today's youth. As artists, we know better than anyone how to embrace ambiguity and the unknown. As an artist educator of over 30 years, I've seen a lot of trends come and go. But the one thing that remains consistent in all of education is the need to teach students how to wonder, be curious, think creatively, critically, persevere, especially in these times. And we all know that experiences in art design cultivate these capacities. Art does something, right? It challenges the way we think. It grapples with difficult questions. It offers insights into the world that we live in. We can use more of that right now. The choice to become an artist teacher means you are expanding your creative skills and putting them to work in ways that will touch the future and impact society. So how do you do that? If you want to be a part of the art education program, you can start your coursework as early as the second semester of your freshman year. Courses go in sequence and you take typically one course a semester as you work your way through your BFA. There's a little bit of leeway there in terms of course load and when you do certain things. Typically our students stay one extra semester to complete their student teaching internship. But here's the really great part. We have a 98% placement rate. So coming out of college, you generally can be placed in a school right away. It can be private, it could be public. We have students who go into museums. We have students who are teaching in other countries. Michigan has a reciprocity with most other states. So you are not bound to just Michigan. We are a family in the art education community, well, all of CCS, but art education is special because we get people from different backgrounds, different majors, and all of that knowledge base kind of comes together to blend into a really exciting group of people who are excited about how to make the art of learning something special for future students. I'd love to talk with you more. Please feel free to reach out, email me, you can call me. Can't wait to meet you in person on campus. Thanks for listening. Okay. So um, I saw some things happening in the chat. I don't know if those are things I need to deal with immediately. Is that anyone have a, something I need to deal with immediately here? Nope. I just wanted to verify the name of the person. So gotcha. Nope. That's no, okay. Just want to make sure I wasn't ignoring anything. All nope. right. So who who are the art education faculty and staff? Um, of course, my name's Amy and I am department chair and assistant professor. And so I teach several of the classes in the program. Um, Carolyn Forgax, who's pictured below me, is the program manager and she is an absolute amazing wizard. She takes care of field placements and a lot of our paperwork and she is spectacular. I have been in education either K-12 or higher ed for over 30 years. So I taught in public schools, charter schools, um, magnet schools, rural schools, city schools for 24 years before I decided I wanted to teach teachers. And it is probably the most amazingly rewarding thing I've ever done. And if it weren't, I wouldn't still be doing it. Um, Carolyn, likewise, has also gone through the CCS art, art education program. So she was in schools for quite some, some time. She's got a really um, substantial background, super supportive, very, very smart, great resource. We also currently have three adjunct instructors. All of these are people who teach the methods courses that people take in the art education program. And they also likewise have extensive K-12 classroom experience. So these are people who, who walk the talk. Um, they practice all the things that they're teaching theoretically about education in schools. So the art education mission, um, I'm gonna talk a little about that, our program learning objectives and sort of the curriculum mission. Um, the art education program at CCS combines an internationally recognized BFA 
degree with a dynamic and innovative teacher preparation courses. And you take these in tandem. I'll talk about that in just a second. In keeping with the CCS mission of producing the finest artists in their respective fields, the art education department prepares teacher candidates to be leaders in diverse educational communities and beyond through a rigorous professional program in content and pedagogy that fosters a love of teaching and learning, an understanding of learner-centered needs, and a mastery of studio and classroom best practices. You know, the real beautiful aspect of this is that you really are taking courses simultaneously. While you're while you are cultivating your artist identity, you are simultaneously exploring these same content concepts through a teacher identity. So you get to work those two lenses off of each other and it really creates a really profound understanding of what it means to be a teaching artist. So our learning outcomes are, are um, pretty standard. We really want you to be prepared to design and deliver age appropriate K-12 art and design curricula. And you're really, we really focus a lot on technology, current events, um, current contexts, culturally relevant pedagogy, things that are really important now. Uh, we value and reflect the underpinnings of visual art as a cornerstone of the American education system. Frankly, I think everything should start with visual literacy and creative processes because that's what we need in this world and that's what's gotten us to where we are. And so really understanding the mechanisms of that and how they intersect with other disciplines is really important. Of course, we meet the state of Michigan standards for teacher prep. And that includes preparation entry level standards and proficiencies and um, visual arts education LQ standards and standards for reading instruction. Michigan requires all teachers, regardless of subject area, to understand literacy. Um, and we, of course, put an art education spin on that. And then beyond the academic curriculum, CCS art ed candidates will engage in service to the community as artist educators, resulting in future community leaders. So I'll talk about this in a moment, but you do have the opportunity to move your educational thinking and lens outside of a traditional classroom and into the community to have different experiences in different spaces and places. So our curriculum, you'll see on the left-hand side, these are the required courses. On the right hand side, and I just happened to pull advertising design, but it's it's fairly similar for most, ouch, stop hitting my finger, sorry. It's fairly similar for most, most majors. We like to start um, people if they're coming into the program as a freshman, I like to get a hold of you that first year, second semester, and you start your first course with me because I wanna get you really excited about what we're up to and what we're doing. And as you can see, there are quite a few spaces here where there isn't an art education course. So this gives you a little bit of freedom, a little bit of leeway to maybe take something at a different time. For instance, if you know your junior year is going to be super, super heavy studio wise, we can move something move something up or move something back. We try to keep one of your senior semesters open because we know that you're working in senior studio and you're doing a lot of your thesis work. There is an additional semester of student teaching that everybody takes and that is um, basically an internship. It's your full time job for that semester and we have eight weeks in an elementary setting and eight weeks in a secondary setting. And that's all laid out here. The other thing I want you to notice is where it has the course title, you'll see a number underneath each one of these. And that number are field hours and we get all of our students out into different schools early on you're just observing but as you move into some of these more advanced methods courses you're actually delivering some lessons and some designing and delivering lessons so you're getting your feet wet before you enter student teaching you'll know what to expect we also want to get you out into urban settings suburban settings and rural settings so that you're exposed to all the different kinds of learning environments that you'll come across in a k-12 space and they should have puppies that interrupt you as you're doing things um, so one of the things that gets you out into the community that you saw in the PLOs is a service learning component. And this is also part of the Michigan Department of Education requirement because we want you to take initiative to get out into the community setting and look for areas of need. So we have some students who do things in museums. We've had things, some students who've done things and designed their own community type uh, events like they might approach 
the why and design an after school program or even find out if a school doesn't have a lot of arts and approach the principal and say hey i'd like to do an after school program here um, of course you can also get involved at ccs ccs has a wonderful summer program for youth and we've had a lot of our art ed students be hired as a teaching assistants or even the full teacher because they love getting our dead people because we really know how to teach our content. So that's also an option. So there's a lot of different creative ways that you can put service learning to work. And, um, and you can propose that to me and I will sit down with you and help you plan that out. Something that's really important is that as an art educator, um, I've been a practicing artist my entire life as I was working. There's this myth that if you're if you're teaching, you don't have time to make art, and that's just not true. As a result, all the curriculum that I design and, and implement in our art education program involves art making. So you're really you're really putting the theory that we're talking about into practice in the classroom. And then these become catalysts for thinking about lesson design and curriculum design. Because one of the things we focus on is process. How does ideation happen? How do you work your way through tensions and ambiguity? As artists, we do it all the time. We're sitting in our studios and we're thinking about it and it's hard. But as a teacher, we have to cultivate an awareness of what's happening in those moments so that we can help our students in K-12 schools understand that those moments are moments of opportunity, not ones that they can resist. So we do a lot of art making, a lot of talking and a lot of focus on process. In addition to that, we give you lots of opportunities to develop your practice. So in almost every course, you're writing lesson plans and you're presenting them. Now, sometimes you're just presenting them to your peers. You're always presenting them to your professors, but you're getting a lot of practice, not only in field, but in the context of the classroom. And of course, that is also building that up for the directed or student teaching experience in K-12 in that final semester of your certification. Ouch, sorry. Okay, so as I alluded to in um, the video, we have a 98% job placement rate. There is a shortage of teachers everywhere right now, and that includes our teachers. So every single person who's graduated from our program, if they've wanted a job, they've gotten one. We get phone calls all the time from principals and school districts saying, hey, we just had a middle school position open up. Do you have anybody for us? And so, you know, we have a shortage of people because we just can't fill them. But our graduates are working in the Tri-County area. They're working throughout the state and the region and internationally, including public, private charter schools, community programs, and museum settings. So there's lots of different things you can apply the learning that you gain in this program. I found this, I just found this little um, tidbit on the on the internet you know where where are the best states for an art teacher and as you can see rank one to ten some of the top places michigan is amongst them this has um i retrieved this from zippa.com art teacher jobs best states and michigan is up there you can see the average annual salary the median is around fifty thousand dollars so art teachers salaries are getting better that's a good thing um there's lots and lots of positions out there lots of new things opening up so um and we help you with all that kind of stuff as well. We can we can set you up with inter interviews as they come across our desk and pass those things on to you. But our contact information, as you can see, my email address is a roop, first initial, last name, at College for Creative Studies. Likewise, Carolyn's is the same. So you can reach out anytime, um, whether you've decided to enter the program or whether you have questions about the program, you can reach out. I'm happy to set up a Zoom meeting individually with you anytime. Um, no question is too silly, too small. Just feel free, I'm really accessible. All right, so that's my dog and pony show. Oh, thank you, admissions. That was very good, I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, and I know um, I'm supposed to do just a quick little bit of information about admissions. Um, I did want to check though, because I know we only have one person here and Kevin, you are, um, looks like for fall 21, maybe still so, um, but you haven't applied yet. It's not too late. So that's awesome to know. Um, pretty simple application process. If you haven't looked into it, um, we have a free online application, which I love. Um, not a huge long essay or anything like that. Um, we need your transcripts from high school. Uh, the minimum GPA for admission is a 2.5. Um, and higher is getting better for scholarship consideration, but minimum just for admission 
is a 2.5. Um, and then we don't require SAT or ACT anymore. So you don't have to send those, but we do require portfolio for admission. And um, the portfolio requirements for most majors are pretty, pretty basic. We wanna see eight to 12 pieces of your best work. And what I wanna see is the stuff you're really excited about, the stuff you are the most proud of, because usually that's your best work. Um, depending on the, the primary major that you're interested in, um, there might be some requirements as far as like drawing in the portfolio. Um, just to backtrack a little bit to make sure that you do understand one thing about art education is it works in tandem with the other majors. So you can't come to CCS and just do art education. Um, you actually choose one of those other majors. Um, so, you know, whatever you pick, if you pick one that does a lot of drawing, say illustration or um, uh, art practice, uh, animation, you know, those are going to want to, we want to see a little bit of drawing in the portfolio. Um, but again, it, it's pretty simple. Um, one major um, concept design does have very, very specific portfolio requirements. Um, they're detailed really well on our website, and I'll put the link in the chat here in just a second. And there are some great examples of all different portfolios and, but especially that concept design one. Um, that one, that one major um, does have some admissions particularities too. Um, the biggest one is it had a February 1st deadline. So that would be the only one you would not be able to apply for for this fall. All the other majors, it's rolling admissions. So once we get those things in, we're gonna review, it'll take us about two weeks and you'll have a decision. Um, you are welcome to reach out to myself. I'll put my email in the chat as well. Um, and you know, if you have any questions, I can always point you in the right direction. Um, once you do apply, you will actually be assigned um, an admissions counselor. They are a great contact person as well. Um, the portfolio, we're happy to take a look at it ahead of time. If you're nervous about it or you're not sure you're including the right kinds of things, um, you can easily set up a portfolio review with one of the admissions counselors. And again, we're happy to give you some feedback on it. You know, if I'm looking at somebody that's a senior or they're getting ready to apply, you know, I'm just kind of looking at it saying, okay, you know, is it ready to apply? Yes, no, you know, what are you missing? We're happy to do that. So I will go ahead and um, throw a couple links in the chat for you. Um, and at this point, I would love for you to unmute yourself um, and you are, since you're the only participant tonight, um, thank you for coming and feel free to ask Amy or myself any questions. No questions? Okay. <laughs> well, if you change your mind or, or you think of something and something comes up, um, don't hesitate to email, okay? I'd be happy to help clarify anything, illuminate on anything. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, yep, I am just getting those links in there for you real quick. There's an admissions requirements copy link here. Um, is there really anything else, Kevin, that we can do for you tonight? That's pretty much what we have for our presentation, unless you had some questions. And you can ask questions, like I said, about um, the department, about the programs, you know, general admissions questions I can answer. Um, how, what is how long? How long is the program? Is that what you're asking? Um, okay, it's a four-year, the, generally the BFA is a four-year program. And then if you do art education on top of that, it's going to add one like extra that. year. Yeah. Just one semester. Just one oh, semester. sorry. One semester. Yeah. Okay. And any other questions, please feel free to unmute or stick them in that chat real quick for you. <laughs> no other questions. Okay. Well, like I said, you've got Amy's email. You've got my email. Um, I don't know if I put my email in there yet, but I will. Um, um, yeah, you are more than welcome to, you know, reach out to us anytime. Oops, I can't type and talk. Type and talk. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for giving us 25 minutes of your time tonight. All right. Well, with that, we're going to wrap it up. All right. You are very welcome. Have a great evening, Kevin. Amy, have a great evening with that adorable. Thank you. Lady.
was actually pretty good. I only saw her head pop up once there. So <laughs> yeah, she only bit my hand a few times too. There you go. She had something to chew on. So yes. <laughs> all right. All right. You guys all, right. all take care. It was really nice chatting with you guys tonight. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.